Good evening. Bonafide Hustler here. Rake and Profit. Jameson Philippi, what up? Cleater. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Brandon. Brandon Penrod in the house. We have three green rumors here. Uh, aces of the FBA lifestyle. And this is going to be a, cr a crazy show. Q Q4 preparation, like how they're going to do it. We're going to get to a lot of questions and a lot of stuff like that. I'm the Bonafide Hustler. I reside in Austin, Texas, and I flip stuff on a part-time basis that I find at garage sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, big box stores. And I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and consignment stores in town. I'm one of the owners of the Green Room University. You can check out the second link down below. I'll introduce Mr. Steve Rakin. You always say introduce, but you never introduce me. Hi, Steve. Here you are. <laughs> Have the show now. <laughs> how's, your neck, how's your neck feeling, man? Anyways, um, what's going on, everybody? Steve Rakin here, 30 years old from Connecticut. I'm also another reseller, run a bunch of different businesses, been making money online for about five years, and excited to hear about what these stone-cold Amazon FBA killers got to say about prepping for Q4. I'm going to pass it over to Cleeter. What's going on, John? What's up? I, uh, since we're apparently doing ages, I'm Jonathan Cleeter. I'm 29 years old, and uh, I basically do primarily retail arbitrage, uh, primarily Amazon, and I do mostly shoes and clothing during the year and mostly toys during Q4. All right. Who do we want to go next? Brandon. <laughs> okay. Let's see how awkward we can make this show. <laughs> yeah. this five hey, we can all just like sit in absolute silence for a few minutes if that would. I'm taught in the military not to volunteer. So, mm -hmm. uh, my name is Brandon Penrod. I sell on Amazon, travel around the country, going to box stores, and uh, making money pretty much yet. And I'm 37. We're doing ages. <laughs> We're doing ages. All right, cool. Jameson, what's up? No, I'm just what? like, what's up, guys? I'm just kidding. <laughs> My mic works fine. Uh, James and Philby, I am 35. Just turned 35 a couple weeks ago, or a week ago. Uh, I sell mainly, whatever. I sell on Amazon full-time. I uh, used to do the eBay thing, then slowly graduated over to Amazon. Now I'm kicking it, doing it on Amazon, and doing my thing. All right. So those are the people that are on the panel today. Of course, if you're in the green room, you'll know who exactly these people are. You can tag them all day long. Um, but let's get into the actual content of the show. I think it's really important. Now, it is a live show. So if you have any particular questions, we aim to kind of stop maybe in the middle. We have a little tiny giveaway. And at the end, we'll have a giveaway as well. Hopefully, we'll get some time for Q&A. But today, we're going to try to rip through this outline. We have to rip through it. Right, Rakin? Is that the right word? Rip through it? All right. Um, so I'm going to ask each individual person, we'll get some quick answers here. So Jameson, how much of your resale pie is FBA? Is any of it MF or eBay? Um, I am probably 99% FBA and 1% merchant fulfilled right now. 1% merchant fulfilled. All right. Yes. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> why, why would you be 1% merchant fulfilled? Because you're restricted in something or what? Um, just because uh, a lot of times I get products a lot earlier than other sellers do. So I like to just dump them as fast as I can. MF before everybody FBAs them and the price drops. Okay, cool. Cleater, what does MF mean for the people in the feed? People might not know this <laughs> terminology. What is MF? Well, the <laughs> I was going to say, um, it sounds for words that I can't eat. No, uh, merchant. Well, actually, it does make me want to cuss, but merchant MF sounds for merchant fulfilled. Uh, when you do FBA, that's fulfilled by Amazon. I mean, you ship it to the customer, or Amazon ships it to the customer. Merchant filled means you ship it to the customer. So. All right, cool. How much of your resale pie, Jonathan Cleeter, is FBA, or is any of it MF or eBay? Um, about 99% is FBA, maybe 1%, 2% is eBay, um, and 0% is FBM. I must ask you, what is the 2% that is eBay? What are you selling on eBay? Um, I sold a bunch of random clothing, and then I have a bunch of shoe returns. So I okay. guess you could say shoes and clothing I get. When you do that volume of shoes, you get you know a decent amount of returns. All right. Uh, Brandon, what about your F? You're all 100% FBA, Brandon? Uh, yes. I have stuff that I need to throw on eBay, but I'm just not at where else to do it. and I don't have somebody there every day to ship, so 100% eBay or FBA right now. Okay. Out of you three guys that are on the panel right now, who is not at home? Like, as in, who is not in their hometown? Who is sourcing and traveling around? Two out of the three. Nice. And you, But, John, you're about to go out, right? Yeah, I'm leaving in the morning, and I'll be probably three to seven days, just depending on how it goes. Okay, cool. Rakin, what about you? Are you home, or are you on the road sourcing? 
Do you have a home, bro? I'm in a, I'm in a, a penthouse, bro? Ho- I'm in a penthouse hotel right now. No, I'm at my house right now. Okay. So in regards to the RA and the holiday season, how important, and this can go to any one of you guys, but how important in the overall profit picture is our couple of months of crazy sales during Q4? Anybody can take the question there. Shall I repeat? <laughs> yeah. I'll let Cleeter have it because Cleeter looks like he wants it so bad right now. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, I would just describe it as saying that Q4 is like the most amazing thing ever. I, I live through the rest of the year just for the awesomeness of Q4. Okay, cool. So Q4 is really October, November, December, but really it picks up heavily like what mid, mid-November to about mid-December. Is that fair to say? Or till about the 20th of December. Am I right about that? Something like that? Like mm-hmm. It gets it gets heavy there. I mean, I'm definitely already seeing some of the signs, but yeah, it starts to really heavily pick up. Basically, everything from Black Friday until two or three days before Christmas. And even then, if you're doing MF orders and you're overnighting them, you can still do some business. Okay, cool. And um, let's talk about your best month in Q4. Uh, Cleater, what was that? Like, if top of your head, everyone knows what their best month in Q4 has been in the past. What was your best month? Uh, I believe December of last year, I did 332000 Jesus. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Brandon, what about you? What was your best month so far? Mine's horrible. My best month is actually out of Q4 because when I've gone into Q4, I've been in different situations where it wasn't <laughs> different well. situations. Uh-huh. But uh, well, there was that one time I got kidnapped, but we won't talk about that. But no, it's like 14000 was the most I've done. So, And that wasn't. You could that, that wasn't you could blow that away. That's nothing. Okay. Did you wait? Repeat that number again. What did you say, Brandon? I'm sorry. It was like fourteen thousand. Kind of embarrassing. I don't want to say. Oh, it. I see. For for Q4. Okay, that's your best Q4. For, 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 for December, yeah. Okay, December. cool. And then Jameson, what about you? Uh, last month, uh, or sorry, not last month. Last December, I did just under ninety thousand. Okay. Nice. So it's definitely a big rush of uh, you know, it, it's important um to really. Let me ask you this: When you when you're cranking out ninety thousand, or Cleeter's doing three hundred something thousand, about how much inventory in the thousands did you have before that whole thing started, Jameson? What would you say? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand? I had around twenty five hundred, I believe, I had going into December. So. Okay. And then Cleeter, what about you going into December to get that number? Um. So you're what you're saying is how much inventory I had in order to get that level of sales? Yeah. The sell through is almost, I'm not, it's not a hundred percent, but when it comes to toys, I can usually hit about a 95% sell through. So I started going into December. I probably had, I don't know. I, I think the max my inventory ever hit was like two or 300,000 because I'd sell it almost as fast as I got it in there. So two or 300,000 units. Oh no, I'm sorry. I thought you meant dollars. I was like, wait a minute. Hold on. Like how uh, many no. units? Uh, well, I can tell you that my total units for Q4 for November and December last year were, uh, just over 19,000. So wow. I think the max I ever had in there was probably about four or five, but honestly, I'm not sure. I just okay. try to sell it as quick as I ship it in. Okay, cool. Um, for the beginners out there that are watching this show, and I'm going to go with Brandon on this, is a Q4 or is Q4 with FBA a good opportunity for any beginners out there? Would you suggest playing in Q4? Uh, beginner, like never sold on FBA. Well, let's say they've sold on FBA and they clear the requirements of the September, October. You have to have 25 units shipped as the measurement to play in Q4. Did you get that email, right? Everyone got the email. Yeah, yeah. You have to, see, you have to sell so many items in the category between certain months prior to Q4. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say it's a good opportunity as long as you meet the requirements you can get into it because that's where you're going to make, I mean, most of your money at Q4 throughout the whole entire year. Anyways, okay. Um, Jameson, how many Q4s have you played in? Three? Four? Um, yes, this will be my third Q4 on Amazon this okay. year. Later, is this your second? Am I right about that? Uh, this this will be my third. I did 2015, third. 2016, and this will be 20, yeah, so third. And then Brandon, how about you? Uh, since 2018, so whenever it is. Did you sell in the Q4 of 13? Yeah. This 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, five. There you go. That's my that's my mark. You know how many days I spent sitting up at night wishing I had been selling in 2013? Life would have been so beautiful. Sorry. Continue. 
Here's a great question that just rolled into the feed. I'm going to uh, give this to Jameson, but everything I scan at the stores is restricted. How do I even begin to sell it with Q4? Help me, please. Michelle, that's from Michelle in the feed to Jameson. Um, that's actually a good question. Um, I actually met up with a friend when I was in Pennsylvania who worked at an Amazon warehouse for like four years but didn't know what Amazon FBA was. And a month ago, he never sold anything on Amazon, and he already got ungated in in some of the toy categories that are restricted by buying, like spending a couple hundred bucks on some invoices through a wholesaler and they got him all the information he needed to get ungated in categories that most new sellers are not able to sell them. So it doesn't seem like it's extremely hard. So you could actually get the ball rolling now and be able to sell for Christmas time if you put in a little bit of work and a little bit of effort to get unrestricted in these some of these toy categories or subcategories that they have. Yeah. Let's talk about the changes of Q4 from a Q4 to another Q4. You know, it seems like three years ago, Q4 was probably the best out of all of them. But like, y'all are still cranking down great money in these Q4s and even last Q4. But last Q4 was really one of the big ones where there were so many restrictions. Remember that? And there was already a lot of things that had changed. So from last year to this year, what has changed now? Is it more IP claim? Like, or what is it? Not IP, infringement claim, right? Is that what I'm... What am I thinking IP of here? claims, IP claims right? intellectual, yeah. intellectual property right claims have definitely become more common. Um, I have monitored them pretty closely. I haven't seen too many in the toy space. Um, brands to avoid in toys, Meccano, uh, obviously fingerlings have gotten pretty dicey. And then also uh, I have seen them for click time. Um, click time is most of those late, basically Lego watches and Lego clocks. It is not the Lego keychains and it's not actual Lego, just the clocks. Um, and then there's a bunch of non-toy brands that I've seen popping up. Uh, and it is definitely, I personally am friends with a seller. Um, I won't give out his name, but uh, just to give you an idea of volume, uh, he's done, he'll do it during Q4, he'll do 100K plus a day. Uh, we're talking a multi, multi-million dollar seller. Uh, and he got uh, enough IP claims, they actually shut his account down for a little over two months to get back on. Wow. So it's basically, it, it, the, the sad thing is it, a lot of it is a lie. Because it's the company saying, since we don't know who this person is who's buying from us, they're basically, they, they created this listing. They don't have a right to these images. We're shutting them down. And Amazon basically just says, we don't want to be bothered to prove it's not true. You have to do it. So at that point, like, like at, my, at this point, I would probably hire an attorney if it was severe enough. But it's definitely, it's definitely changing the landscape. You've got to be really careful. Brandon, how do you feel about that statement? Because um, you're, you're going, you know... I'll just say it, you're going balls to the wall with Q4 this year. And how does that make you feel? Um, and you're in the same boat as Jameson, Cleeter. Yeah, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, you gotta, you got to be leery of it. you got to know, that, hey, that's there. And just be smart, you know, and, and still get with it in the way. If you do, then you're not going to go buy anything. You're going to be hesitant. Too hesitant. So you just got to be smart about it. Network with other people and learn from their mistakes, you know, and try not to. That's why you get up in the network and talk to people and you learn what, what you, you know, definitely don't buy and this and, and to shy away from. So you just can't let it get in the way. I mean, if you do that, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. So definitely got to spread uh, thin. I mean, there's so many things to buy and sell, raking. Like when you eat. When you go to, it's the same thing. I mean, there, there's all kinds of restrictions, even when you do the pawn shop game or whatever, like some things that were not restricted, one month can get restricted, doesn't mean it all ends there. It means try not to have a whole lot of money wrapped up in a one thing. Right, I mean, that's just that. the, that's the name of the game with Amazon, you know? And in terms of what you were talking about before, I mean, when you're doing retail arbitrage and you're selling other brands, I mean, that's why you see some big sellers just moving to wholesale and just moving to private label because when you're selling retail arbitrage, there is a slight chance that you, know, you get kicked off. But you know, if you think about all the various types of businesses, there's always one or two things, right? Like there's usually one or two things that are always like hedged up against your business that could take you down completely. So it's like, should you avoid retail arbitrage because you know Amazon's not looking at the uh, receipts anymore and various factors? I mean. It's something to be leery of, but you know, it's just part of the game. You know, you're rolling the dice in a sense. Yeah. And you roll the dice with a lot of things. I mean, I think Amazon with the app or whatever, I mean, they give you enough data, right, to make an educated guess on where this thing will end up. But like things like that fingerling thing, right? That what three three weeks ago, it was cleared and everyone was trying to find a bunch of them, right? But then something came down. Are those bogus claims or are some of those really the company fingerling saying, hey, you can't do this. 
fingerling ones seemed pretty questionable. Um, one of them was coming from the name of the person sending the email with an, was an author of a book called Fingerlings that who is not alive anymore. So clearly he's not sending emails. My theory is that someone had a VA probably overseas and they just Googled who's the name of the owner of Fingerlings and this VA didn't know any better. They just saw the name associated with the book and assumed that was the owner and started sending emails from that name. But it's, it's really tough to say because there are definitely, like if you look at Fingerlings right now, most of them have Chinese counterfeiters on them. So I probably am just going to stay away from them completely because it's becoming a crap show pretty fast. Okay, cool. Interesting. Um, okay, so let's talk about three takeaways in regards to Q4 FBA. Each one of you guys will give a takeaway, right? So when you think of Q4, the first thing that comes to your mind as a takeaway, Jameson. Um, my biggest takeaway from last Q4 is don't go so deep on products. Um, did you go deep on last year? What did you go deep on, Jameson? What was it? Just uh, tell us. I think I went like 250 plus or 200 something deep on Speakout. Um, I okay. didn't lose money, but I think at the end I was only making a dollar or two dollars a game. I was about to say, you're probably making like 50 cents or a dollar when that thing was yeah, going down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I held on to it way too long and the profits never hit. Why, um, why did you hold on to it so long? Were you thinking pie face in your head? Like, what were you thinking in your head the whole time? I mean, it did a lot of the same things pie face would do. Like, like right after summertime, I was the only FBA seller selling them for 99 bucks all day long, and I couldn't even keep them in stock. And then it did very similar things. So then I just, you know, throughout the whole year, they were, you know, they remained around five to 10 bucks profit here or there. And then Amazon would come in and instantly sell out. So I just went deep on them, like targeted a buy two, get one free. And then um, I just went to every target and cleared every single shelf. <laughs> and I ended up, I think I was with Steve then. I think we did some sourcing around that time and I we were buying them too. And I think I, I did like 220, 230 of them units altogether. Jamison, I still have nightmares of um, you, you filling up my garage, me trying to oh, walk yeah. out and there's just, I mean, it was just like, it was unbelievable. I mean, you must've had a thousand units in my garage. It was yes, insane. I remember that Oregon trail and speak out. We did the board game thing. When we were in Connecticut, <laughs> you never gave me my cut, man. For 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 me allowing you to store all my stuff. Where is that Ooh. cut, man? Um, it's it's in all the money you made off that video we did at your house. <laughs> Dude, Steve's made like three or five k off that video, just so you know, right? Come on, tell me, man. That video, yeah, that video is. I think it's made like over three thousand dollars. So uh, you, you you told me it made three thousand like a year ago. So it's got to be doing better than that. <laughs> It buys. It buys. I'll, Steve I'll, a MacBook I'll show Pro you behind the scenes. I'll let you know. <laughs> Just so you know, Steve can afford a new MacBook Pro every year because of that video, Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> and he anyway. doesn't even answer my phone calls now. <laughs> Ooh, man, low blows on the show, dude. Um, all right, be best uh, biggest takeaway from last year, Cleeter. Um, so I don't know if you remember this, but I did a, sh a green room show a year or two years ago, and I discussed how my goal was always to be Toyberg. Uh, back in, in Christmas of 15, anyone selling in would remember that Toyberg would just like show yeah, up on yeah. a list. I remember who you're saying. And they would yeah. drop like a thousand units on it and that would be it. So I continue my march to be Toyberg. Um, I can't say I completely agree with Jameson in the sense that I, like, I made money on Oregon Trail, I made money on Speak Out. But basically, as soon as I saw that it was a profit, I liquidated all my units fairly, fairly efficiently. But we have, uh, we've gone to a lot of steps. Like this year, we have a new 2,000 square foot warehouse. Uh, and we've set the entire thing up to be able to prep units just as quickly as possible. Uh, I have actually, my team will spend most of October scanning and researching all the different toy lines. We're putting together a master list of what we want to buy. And yeah, just do everything bigger and better. And I mean, you have a little more capital, you have a little more experience. And at the end of the day, I out of, well, I, I had one skew. I was just looking, uh, there was this one line of toys. Uh, and I will, I will give a hint that they were found in the girls section. And uh, they were, they were I, I will say that they were a type of dolls. And uh, on this line of dolls, I sold $72,000 in Q4 of just that line of dolls. Oh, wow. So, you know, baby I alive. do go pretty it's deep. baby alive, isn't it? I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it is not. Oh, okay. <clears throat> is it a monster's high? <laughs> it's not. And that's the last one I'm going to answer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, cool. I had to say that. Okay, so... um. All right, so let's talk about key takeaway from Brandon. Last Q4. I would say not not buying not buying too early, not clearing bills too early and, and holding on to the items. 
So you regret not buying earlier this no. year? Or oh, yeah, you're correcting that? Not, not, don't buy too early. Oh, and okay. And be, and be stuck with it, and you're running out of capital, and then you're sitting there holding stuff thinking, oh, it's going to go up, when technically maybe you should have waited another month to buy those items. Okay. Let me ask you guys this real quick, and then call it college pickers in the chat. What's up, Eric? Good to see you, man. Thanks for uh, moderating the chat, by the way, because it's going so nuts right now. No, I'm just kidding. Our chat never goes nuts. We always have good people in the chat, but thanks to Eric. He's in the chat, but let me just re reflect on something really quickly, um, and I'm not going to toot the horn of the green room or anything, but college picker, Eric, uh, what was it? Two years ago, guys? Help me help me remember this. Remember the Catan craze? Was that two? That was two Q4s ago, correct? Uh, 2015. 2015 yeah. Q4, right? <laughs> One tip from my like, college picker, and I think he want I want to say he did the Oregon Trail chip too, but um, you know, how how much, let's say revenue, right? Did Catan pull for you guys? Let's say in 2015, Jamison, did you ever sc scout those things out? Did you look for them? Did you? There's Barnes and Noble. They were at Targets. They were. They weren't at Toys R Us, I don't think. Dude, but anyway. we spent like three days together traveling through like four states <laughs> looking for those things. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was in every, yeah. every time I went, through, every time I went on a Periscope, Jameson's like, "Do not say a word. <laughs> Do not let her know what store we're in front of right now." Like, that's what I got to know how paranoid some of these guys are, but for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be clear, Jameson went through a phase where he literally just would get on Periscope and sell out as that. many polos as he could to make friends. And it was like <laughs> he wanted people to like him, but they just liked him for his polos. So, you know, it was if – I, if I was not dating his mom, I would have had to have taken it off. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> so about – yeah, would you t consider the revenue of in the thousands, Jameson, for that one tip? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, Totally. totally? Penrod and uh, Cleeter, did you guys mess with the Catan stuff two years ago, for yes. example? I found a few of them, yeah. I yeah. don't like actively go to every store just seeking that, but if I run across them, I, I try not to chase. Like, I'll chase in October, but come November, yeah, there's Oh, Steve's, there's, yep. Steve's got one. But Talk, Steve. Up. Let's see what that thing is. Is I that the real? That, yeah, we got a little. This is actually one that I found at a – I found two of them recently, actually. Uh, the other one was a blue one, but uh, – you should have gotten that. List. You should have gotten it listed quicker. It's done now. Oh yeah! Right don't here. sell that on it's Amazon scary. anymore. Is it yeah. restricted I, mean, now? I know. Exactly. I know. I, I went to go <laughs> freaking send it out. I'm like crap. What's it gonna pull on eBay then? Like what? hundred bucks? Uh, I remember my last no. one on Amazon was ninety four. saw bucks. listings were like fifty bucks or forty bucks. They were really wait, crappy. Wait, 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 wait. It'll go. Yeah, up. I will. You only pay two bucks for it. Wait. So you're saying wait that out. When what, so let me I want to know right now what would you guys do considering well, we'll start with Brandon what would you do can't ship this into FBA because it's um, restricted can you merchant fulfill it or is that restriction restriction for anything on Amazon I think it's anything Isn't it? huh right yeah. It's just, yeah they're not just gonna restrict FBA and leave merchant fulfilled open yeah right I, um, that's what I want to get across to the people. So what would you do? Something like that, I would, on anything like that, I would, especially this time of year, I would wait until November and just check back on eBay with the prices on. Yeah, I, uh, I, I would stick it in a closet and forget about it for a year or two years. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, you know, with one good tip, I mean, that's the thing. But that's also, like, something to be talking about right now. Uh, when you have a good bolo, right? And I want to give uh, props to Craig Morris. He did a pretty good write-up in the green room about how if you have something really good, <clears throat> especially in the in the Q4, as much as you want to be sharing and giving to other people and all that kind of stuff, you know, putting it in a 800 person, 900 person group like the green room, or putting it into a 40,000 group like some of the other free groups out there, that bolo is going to do nothing but just what is it, Jameson? What's the what's the term that you always say now? Tank, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I, I get it. Like, you know, that's the reason why Cleeter's making a list. He's working hard. He's doing all this kind of stuff. So he's not reacting to things when it comes to go time. I mean, he's got the list. And Cleeter, when you make a list and you got what you want on it, do you de do you detract from the list in any way, or is that all that you mess with, or you and your team messes with? Oh no, no, no. We're very flexible. So what we do? Well, I don't know how. How detailed do you want me to go? I mean, you want me to kind of explain the system? Well, we have thirty-five minutes left in the broadcast, so try not to smoke all that up. <laughs> <laughs> so for the first thirty minutes, I want to talk about my childhood. <laughs> no, I, uh, I. So what we do is we. Um, for me, it's 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 partially about building a list, 
and it's partially about training my team as far as knowing what toys are. I, I don't, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use 2015 examples because those are pretty much dead. In 2015, dino trucks were big. And I had started scanning them in November because I was pretty new then. And I had just I was still working a full-time job up until mid-November. So I was kind of after work, I'd go to Toys R Us and I'd scan around. And I had figured out they were a Toys R Us exclusive. I'd also found a bundle listing where people were putting like all of the little trucks together and making a bundle and it was selling for a pretty good profit. So because I already knew in advance they were a Toys R Us exclusive uh, and Pie Face was that year too. And I had seen Pie Face where obviously Amazon was running out on it. So I, I had just started educating myself. This is what Amazon is not able to keep in stock. This is what is exclusive to these particular stores. This is what a lot of people are aware of. These are the things not a lot of sellers have found. So I would say the list is more like a guide because what will happen is during Q4, you'll see sales. I think probably Target's board game sale, spend 100, save 25, is a pretty famous one. Like with Joking Hazard, it was four games for 100 bucks, save 25. It was perfect. But, uh, you know, obviously that that's restricted now. So for me, it's just get, finding out what Walmart and Target and Toys R Us and Walgreens, what do they have in their inventory? I've been hitting some local outlets, just really familiarizing myself. And unlike Brandon, I, I did what Brandon did in 2015 when I had lower capital. Now that I have more capital, I'll probably have, I don't know, maybe like forty or $50,000 invested in some of the harder to find toys going into Q4. And then I'll keep amping up my buying until hopefully if everything goes right, we could be spending about 150000 every two weeks if all goes according to plan once we get right you know, into the heart of things. Right. We're going to jump ahead to one of the questions real quick because this is the perfect time to do it. But, Cleeter, how big is your team now, and what does your team consist of? Uh, we are probably going to bring in somebody for the holidays, but it's still me, my manager, Karen, who you met, mm -hmm. uh, my friend Rick. He does a lot of the driving. Um, Katie, who she does a lot of our uh, listing and prepping. Uh, and then we're probably going to bring in someone to help with the shopping because we do – we do our shopping in four and five man teams. So we're going to add another van loader to the team and we have two vans and a, a, a trailer. And a trailer. Okay, cool. Wow. And about when they go out to a sourcing run, like is this a week long thing or you're like, yeah, go out to that town, come back as fast as possible. Or do you ship the prime zero prep? Like what are you guys doing? I know you said you had a 2000 square foot warehouse, but is it uh, cost effective to grab the stuff, bring it all the way back to where you guys live, prep it there? or was it wise to just ship it off to PZP? In my case, I will prep it all. Um, if if I do a large OA order and I'm running behind, I might send it to a prep center, but we should do it all in-house. Uh, we've, we've put a lot of systems in place that our goal is to, you know, I've bought, like I think I've shipped my tape machine and I've, I've, I've really, like we've already been hoarding Lowe's boxes. I have close to 500 large boxes already stacked up because the goal is just to be able to bank stuff out as quick as you can. And, uh, it, it can get pretty crazy. Like that's why we need the barrier repair warehouse. Because one day in Q4, they were running a, a one day sale, and I managed to spend 51k in one day. And you can imagine how many toys that was. We had to literally like unload the vans as we prepped. That's crazy, man. So you're talking about successful systems and stuff like that, Raken. How important is a system when it comes down to a process? Well, I mean, a process and a system are almost like the same thing. Well. I mean, to get to the end result, there's certain things that you have to do. And um, when it comes to a lot of systems, it helps you to save your helps you to save time. And uh, if you put a system in place, the purpose is the purpose of it is to save time in a sense and to continuously get the result that you're looking for. Um, so it's really, really important because as you grow, you're going to have a lot more things that you have to do. And it's important to have systems in place because if you don't, then things aren't going to get done and your business isn't going to grow. Yeah. Cleeter, the day that you spent 51K in toys, were you thinking this is the greatest day of my life or let's ship this stuff out immediately so I can get some money back? Like what was going on through your head? So I, I guess I got, I'm kind of proud of my guys there. Uh, my, my friend Brock, my business partner Brock was uh, shopping with us and I had spent, I had been there for, I think the fourth or fifth store and I, we were up to about 35 K in spend and I was just exhausted. I wasn't feeling well. I hadn't slept that much. So I actually was like, let's call it a day and went home. And then my team pretended like they were going to go home. And then when I went home, they went and hit two more stores. So they kind of surprised me on that one. But yeah, we just, we took, we took the next day off. And then the day after that, we pounded it out as quickly and efficiently as we could. How long does it take to process $51,000 of toys? Um, in my old warehouse was a little smaller. Uh, and I think it took us, I think we got the majority out of it out. We got the bulk, we probably got the bulk of it out in about three days. 
and then we were cleaning up all the stuff that needed to be polybagged. But my goal is to do 48 hour turnaround time this Q4. But I'm also going to spread the spending out a little bit, hopefully. Nice. Not doing so much in one day. CPC, Clear Prep Center. That's, what, that's, that's your new <laughs> LLC, man. On the off season, you can just be a prep center for other people's stuff, man. Anyway, million dollar idea. Just kidding. Um, okay. So let's talk about um, number nine. Outside of toys and games, are there any other categories that you should really be looking at? Let's go with Brandon on that one. I'm talking about Q4 here. So like toys and games are clearly like the big rage and everything like that. But are there other categories, Brandon, that you're like, yeah, uh, I like this one. It's a sleeper category or something like that. Um, I don't know if there's anything that I've looked at that's like sleeper category, but I think maybe the obvious, the seasonal, apply for, for – for Thanksgiving and for and you know, and Halloween to all the seasonal and Christmas time, but I don't know if there's I haven't thought of a sleeper category or anything like that. I just what I see in front of me is what I'm buying. So. Okay, uh, Jameson, what about you? Um, uh, besides the obvious toys and video games, um, shoes, clothes. Um, that's about oh, all. Some I like really low ranked clothing in Q4 that sells fast. Yeah, yeah, I did decent with some clothing last year, sweaters and stuff like that. Okay, but, so sweaters, like Christmas theme things, you mean? No, just like hoodies and stuff like that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's winter time. Oh, is it really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one rank. I don't know. Um, so are both of y'all like you and Cleeter? Are you both y'all grown beards out? Because Cleeters always look the same to me, but like you, Brandon, look completely different right now. Like. Cleeter, you're going to do the no shave till, what is it? No shave November, is that what it's called? No shave December 31st. Jeez. <laughs> well, I would say during Q4, I sometimes forget to do basic things like sleep, so it's possible. But uh, I, I try to keep mine about the same length and then trim it back, but we shall see. Just depends on how good the sourcing is. If I have time to, uh, you know, have my barber take care of my beard and I still be Jameson Sales, then I don't care what he challenges me to. <laughs> and then, Brandon, you're not shaving until... What? Ever. Never again. Uh, till December 31st or maybe after. May not even get a haircut till then. Jeez. Okay. It depends on how, day, how, how much I'm sourcing. Wow. It's crazy, man. We'll crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, what's cra what's really kind of interesting, Brandon, is are you a single man team right now or you have a helper in Fort Worth or Waxahat? What is it called? <laughs> in Waxahat. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wax. Don't say wax. We don't wax out there. We put wax ahead. Okay. Do you have a you have a worker at your you have a warehouse too, right? Like a tiny place, correct? Yeah, it's yeah, it's part of town, but I haven't been sending anything back here lately. So I'm not at the point like, I'm not a big baller like Cleeter where I have more money than time. So um, that's all I can afford right now is just a part timer. Okay. So I get the capital. And then Jameson, are you solo? This yes, Q4? I'm solo, yes. Wow, in hotel rooms and just blasting it out, right? That's right. That's what I do. Unbelievable. Okay, so let's talk infrastructure for each one of you guys. So we talked about Cleeter's infrastructure. He's got employees, has trucks. He's got plans. Got He might involve a prep center if he absolutely has to, but probably not. Um, and uh, so let's talk about you, Jameson. Uh, no employees, no trucks. Do you have a plan where you're going to spend you spending most of your time? Um, right now I'm working on uh... – either like setting up an Airbnb or something for a few months. And so that way I can just work in one location. Um, I'm thinking about Minnesota, Wisconsin area. That was my um, next question. It's like, what makes you pick the location? Is it just radius of amazing stores around you? Yeah, just what I can get to. Cause I want to be right in the middle where I can hit one chain of stores in a different region. And then one chain of stores in another region where I can be about four to five hours from different chains of stores that most of the country can't get to. Okay. So I'm going to try something new this year and, Give that a shot. How big is your car, Jameson? What kind of car do you have? Uh, I have a Chevy Equinox, so it's not huge. Okay. Um, I can fill it up in, in a few hours sometimes. Oh, wow. Okay. Have you thought about maybe getting into a van or something bigger like that? Um, was it? I don't remember if it was last Q, did not last Q4, but the Q4 before that. I rented a, 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 one of those conversion vans where the whole back is just gutted out. Um, I did like the unlimited miles. It was like 400 bucks for the week. And it was like during one of the targets best sales. And for that whole week, I just filled up the van and I would like bring off like 20 boxes to UPS and stuff. And you, it was, it was awesome. I'll probably do something like that again this year. 
Okay. So that's for like, if, if a sale comes down and you, you notice it's good, that's when you're going to get the go signal and probably try to rent this thing for a couple of days, right? Yep. Yep, okay. definitely. It's awesome, man. Um, are you going to involve a prep center or are you going to do it all, Jameson? Um, I'm actually looking into a prep center right now, so I'm going to start doing OA here too for this Q4 so I can try to ramp up my numbers a little bit better. Okay, cool. Brandon, what is a prep center for the people that don't know what a prep center is? Talk to me. Wow, well, uh, only Brandon on the, on the panel here. But. The other Brandon. Oh, cut now. Cut now. So, uh, Prep center, they basically, you, the, you send your stuff to them or you send your stuff to them uh, via LA, online arbitrage, and they basically send it to Amazon for you. Okay. So you never actually that. physically touch the stuff, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't have to. Right. I mean, yeah, it, it, right. either, well, I'm saying it, you do it one of two ways. You go and source it online. And get shipped there, or you can sort it yourself and ship it to them. Okay, cool. Um, so let's take a break for a second. Let's get a couple questions answered from the feed. Ray, and I think it's contest time. And lo and behold, we have our Jameson Filthy here, who actually behind the scenes is like, "Hey, Bonafide, is it okay if I give some free stuff away on your show?" Uh, I love it. You said no. <laughs> I said no because I was like messing with you, man. I know how you were. <laughs> uh, what do we have? What are, what are the two prizes? What do we got so far, man? We're going to give away uh, two $10 Starbucks gift cards. Ooh, what? Okay. Someone that gets a $10 get, a Starbucks gift card, what are they supposed to buy with these things, Jameson? What, are you going to get a, a chai tea latte? Is that what you always get? Or No, 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 no. Quadruple shot of espresso is what I start my morning on. Oh, quad shot. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Okay. How's the crash on that? Yeah. yeah. It's fine. If you keep the buzz going, you, you, you'll you'll be all right. <laughs> He's like, if you never stop, if you never <laughs> stop, you're just 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 fine. <laughs> Words of addiction. I had a triple shot of a triple shot when I was with him, and I thought I was going to run through the wall at Target. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you like get halfway to the store and realize you forgot your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Jameson, so we have one of these $10 cards up for grabs. Uh, do you have a system of how you want to kind of give it out? Ooh, um, okay, we'll let you do the first one. You guys can think of the first thing, and I'll think okay. of something. You'll think the of the second one. one. I'll let yeah. Raken think of the first one since I thought of the first one the last time. Raken, what's the question okay, that so, they need to answer? Okay. So the answer, you're going to essentially, the people who are watching, you're going to put it in the comments, and it's going to be the first person who gets it right, Chris? Yep. Comments? I am. All right. So about ten minutes ago, I held up a game um, that people were pretty surprised that I found for three ninety nine from Savers, and we were talking about how a couple of years ago we made a ton of money from it. What game is it? Wow, Steve! <laughs> totally killed that one. All right, we got Tanya in the house. She wins because Jonathan Cleeter <laughs> gave me. <the> I won. <laughs> All right, so Tanya, I want you to hit up Jameson behind the scenes. He'll get it to you. Is that a, is that a fair thing to do, Jameson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I cool. think you might know who Jameson is, Tanya. And I, Jameson, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know who Tanya is. So They've that's met good. before, right? No, They've met know. before. <laughs> I don't know what Thrifty Treasures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just playing. Okay, so let's go uh, on with the show. We're actually doing really well. We're gonna kind of uh, speed it up here. Um, so I don't want to go through 11. It's kind of dumb. Uh, we'll go through this one real quick. Uh, when does the real rush start to become evident with Q4? When you when you realize it, not in the way that you rush to the stores or buy stuff, but when you start seeing sales really, really pick up. Because I've been told like the best deals that you'll ever get on something, whether it be like an electronic or something like that. And if you look through Camel, 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 a lot of times some of the best deals are like the week before uh, Thanksgiving. Have you noticed that? Or sometimes two weeks before Thanksgiving. Like, And then after that, it ran... It goes down or it might ramp up like right before Christmas again. But when does the real rush become evident? Cleeter, what, what have you seen? Mm, I mean, all through November, I do start to see spikes. And then uh, I would say anytime after Black Friday, it gets pretty crazy. But there's definitely volume like the last two weeks of November. But after Black Friday is when it gets really crazy. Okay. So what about you, Jameson? Are you starting to see spikes now or that's too early, right? Um, no, I don't think so now. I mean, my sales generally are going up because I'm putting in more work, but I think, yeah, probably like what they said around, you know, like November and stuff like that, Black Friday and stuff. Okay. 
And then, Brandon, when you start seeing your, when, when do you notice the, the first real good spike of like traffic to your Amazon store? I think it's like in November. Yeah. Is it pre Thanksgiving or after? Oh, pre Thanksgiving for sure. Okay. So they start to see it in pre Thanksgiving. So kind of like shows you guys out there, you know, if you're going to play with uh, Q4, that you might want to start like now sourcing things or at least doing your research now uh, so you can get your, uh, your foot in the door, you know come October, maybe there's some really good sales from Target or one of these other places. And that might, that might be the time to start pulling the trigger on some low priced inventory, right? Uh, Jameson, you are notorious for these Target sales and like knowing everything about them and stuff. Can, how, how can you supercharge a Target sale? Like there's a sale at Target, you see it in the, in the paper, you go there, it's there on the shelf. Um, how do you compete even further with Amazon? Like. Do you, I know because Target doesn't have rewards points like Toys R Us did, right? Mm -hmm. They have the, is it two five percent back with the card? Help me out. Yeah, there, yeah right? the, red, the red card. Yeah, they get so that's a red card and you get like double the return like time frame or something weird like that. But mm -hmm. how can you supercharge that even more? Like how can you, and I know Cleeter probably knows the answer to this, but like how can you get even lower in there? Um, you could steal the stuff. Oh, okay. But, That's pretty good. No, yeah, right now, Target is the Target card. That's it. Unless you're finding gift cards for more than 5%, which you're probably not, um, the Target card is your best. Okay. Is your best John, is there any way to supercharge, like, your entry point? Um, with Target, it's tough. Because... What would you say? <laughs> buying a no buy sales tax state. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much it. If you use the red card, I... that is the edge, right? I, I did once have it, and I'm not sure that they were supposed to do this, but I, I did once have a store give me 5% off of my transaction because I used Target gift cards to pay for a portion of it, so I technically stacked. I double dipped on that one, but for the most part, if I, I have occasionally found 7% off Target gift cards, but it's typically just the 5%. Okay. Target okay. is tricky because if you draw too much attention, they might kick you out. Question from <laughs> Thrifty Treasures. Uh, Jameson, hopefully you know who this person is. Um, do you use the Cartwheel app? <laughs> for Target to get more discounts. Do you ever use the cartwheel thing? Yes, I use cartwheel almost every day. I just use it today. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so there you go. Um, what about uh, Penrod, when it comes to like Toys R Us, are you ever part of their like email thing behind the scenes where they give you like first dibs on toys that they're only gonna, or it might even be, just be a special order toy only, like internet order only. You ever seen that before, Penrod? Yeah. 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 Uh, so how does someone cleater get on that list? Because you're a Toys R Us genius. Like, to get on the email list where you can start seeing some of these like really exclusive. And the only one that comes to my mind right now is two years ago. There was one called, it was at the Silver or the Gold Dino exclusive uh, robot dinosaur. You know, I don't. I think you know what I'm talking about, right, Cleeter? I do. Um, I mean, I'm on their email list, so I see all of their their notifications and sales there. But I really don't spend that much time chasing like like I bought up 200 something Hatchimals in like. October, November, early November, but I didn't chase them during Christmas. Like I, I think I've I've held one of the SNESs or whatever they're called. So I spend my time trying to focus on the lower hanging fruit because you can either like go through a ridiculous amount of effort to get one or two units or get something that's maybe not quite as profitable, but you can get you know hundreds of them. Okay, I love that analogy. That's actually really smart. Um, okay, so uh, cutoff dates. Let's talk about cutoff dates, meaning the last real day that you send in significant amounts of volume to Amazon. Um, when do you think the cutoff date will be? I mean, there, there seem to be dropping boxes. When I say boxes, they seem to be dropping warehouses in so many towns now, right? That that's only going to speed up things. Cause as I observed it last year, there was like a huge kink in the system. Like you would send things out and it would have to get rerouted and it might take seven and 10 days before you see your stuff live in your inventory. Right. But those days, to me seem kind of over like they've built these the infrastructures there am i wrong about this uh jameson or do you anticipate that uh you know maybe the 18th of december will be your last ship in date or something like that yeah that's usually what i do and i'm actually glad you repeated that because i was too busy reading the comments i forgot what you said but yeah around the 18th 19th is when i stop shipping stuff in <laughs> okay and uh do you find that your stuff that you ship in right now, Jameson, for wherever, wherever you are in America, does it take, what's the average time it takes to get into your screen, into your account, sorry, into your actual? It's two days, usually. Two days? That's pretty yeah. good. That's how, that's that's what I kind of experience, too. Penrod, what about you? You're in a different location. What do you see? When you ship something off, what is it, two days? What's the most? Well, okay. What was the question? I'm reading the comments. <laughs> oh, so, okay. That's all good. 
The uh, <laughs> when's okay? Let's, let's, let's ask this question. When's the, when's the last day that you're gonna send this stuff to Amazon? Like a, a, a big heaping amount of stuff to Amazon. All the way through December, like it. You got your group of items that you want to sell by Christmas because they're Christmas items, and then you got groups of items that will sell after Christmas into January. Because January, I do do just as well in January as you can in December. I think. So I don't really have a. I, my cutoff date is probably like Jameson said on the 18th or so for my items. I want to sell by the 22nd, 23rd for Christmas, but I'll still keep the items in throughout. Okay. Uh, Cleeter, what about you? Your last day to send in, you think? Well, what was amount? the question? I was reading the comment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, for me, it'll probably be the 18th. Um, we've kind of planned it out to say that Monday the 18th will be our last day. I will say that toys don't necessarily just immediately die after Christmas because a lot of times when you're selling toys FBA, the reason you're making the profit is because Amazon has ran out and they don't like magically get 15 semi truck loads the day after Christmas. So uh, there's a lot of toys that I, I can, if I wind up selling after Christmas, it's not a huge deal because it'll take them at least the first couple of weeks of January to fully get stocked up. It just becomes riskier because, I mean, a truckload of it is coming. You just hope you get sold out before it gets there. So if I ship on the 18th and a few things have to be sold, you know, closer to New Year's, people will spend their Christmas gift cards and I'll be okay. Okay, cool. Um, Jameson, what are you going to do different this year than last year? Significantly different. Uh, work harder. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm going to do different. Dude, you were working really hard last year, though. Like, honestly, Raken, right? Like, when he's – I mean, weren't you guys, like, sourcing, like, a – like a man, that was 50, both of y'all. That was 2015. Okay, but still, like you were working hard in 2015. I remember that. Raken's like, I saw in the videos. I saw yeah, the I kind of got burned out last year, right, right before key, like two months before key four. I just got sick of it and just like stopped working. Luckily, I had enough inventory and in stock to keep me afloat for a few months. But yeah, I'm gonna work a lot harder this year. That's for sure. So, so what does that mean by working harder? Um, you know, because you can work hard physically or you can work hard mentally planning preparing um you know obviously you're going to be on the road so so what does that encompass working harder give a couple examples um i'm gonna put in more hours this time obviously with i mean i got it to the point where the more hours i put in the more i make because this is just you know become a lot easier to do and i don't have to like do a lot of work learning because i've just you know i've got this is the third q q4 under my belt so it just a lot of experience. the same items, yeah. A lot of the items that I sold last year, I know we're going to do the good this year. So I've already started stocking up on some of the items and is getting as many items as I can. Cool. Uh, N2 Good says a quote to quote very Gary V. Work your face off is what it says. It's pretty. Yes. Cool. I like that one. Work your face off, Jameson. Um, what about you, uh, Cleeter? What are you going to do different, significantly different this year as opposed to last Q4? Well, I plan to take more naps. No, I'm just kidding. So I, uh, I, 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 I adopted a goal where um, during Q4 last year, I didn't want to ever be in line at a register, and I didn't want to ever have to load my own vehicle. So I'm really trying to continue that. I walk in, I help uh, Karen fill a bunch of carts of stuff, and then I just leave, and uh, they go ahead and do the rest. So I'm Where do you really leave to? to? To the next location? Yeah, to the next store. So okay. we'll run like three or four vehicles, and that way there's always someone filling carts. There's always someone checking out. And then there's basically as soon as that person does, they can go to the next store and start checking out. Because if you do the, like if you do, you know, 15, 16 cartfuls, it takes quite a bit of time for the cashiers to process it all. So you gotta you gotta allow quite a like actually like actually a couple hours sometimes for that. So So you're going to some of these different places, Cleeter. Like, does it ever occur in your head like, oh man, like I might not be able to pull this off in this store because this is gonna throw on like a huge like red flag, like I'm a reseller and some of these stores don't like resellers, right? Well, when it comes to Target, I kind of, I have to do it a little differently. I'll blitz them. Like I'll have like five people hit self checkouts at different sides of the store and the big targets, and one person will go through the checkout line. So I'll just spread everyone out and just start pounding it through. Um, <laughs> as far as, and obviously Walmart could care less and Toys R Us. I have Toys R Us managers that I had a Toys R Us manager who told me last year that this year, uh, if he's still working there, he'll he might be able to open up an hour early for just me and my guys to buy stuff. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. They, I would imagine with the uh, bankruptcy issue, I would imagine Toys R Us will be fairly fairly friendly. They're always friendly to me, but I would imagine they'll be fairly friendly to us. You just have to, if you're new to reselling, you got to be really careful with Toys R Us because they do mark stuff up, and during Christmas, they will mark stuff up more. So it, it's, it's just Target is easier. I like Toys R Us, but Target is definitely easier from a math perspective because Toys R Us will mark it up. So just be careful. Don't get me wrong. I love Toys R Us, but they will surprise you. 
you'll find out the retail was off when you get home and look at another store. What are the chances that you're the only thing keeping Toys R Us afloat right now, Cleeter? <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> probably not. Now, I will say there was a store, there was a store in Atlanta who told me that I was uh, – that the day after Black Friday, I accounted for 10% of their sales. So, oh my God. Uh, for the day after Black Friday, which is a very busy day for them, and I have had stores on normal days where I was, you know, 30% of their sales, but I would say no, overall, they don't know who I am. They're all like or at they, the door waiting for your trucks to come. They're like, I hope, <laughs> I hope Cleeter comes today. I hope he does. <laughs> they, uh, well, what I, what I try to do is I try to compete because like when, it, and I'm using Toys R Us as an example because I'm friends with the managers, but I try to kind of compete them against each other. And by that, I mean, we had a manager who was kind of a pain to deal with. And I kind of implied to her that we would shop at other stores if she continued to be a pain. Um, and she, she changed her tune for sure. Cause you know, they, they are competing internally to hit numbers. And if I'm spending, you know, 10 K at one store and none at your store, I mean, that's going to make it really hard for you to catch that other store. But like the stores that are really cool to me, I've sent them pizza. I even brought them a hatch. And I think I mentioned that in the green room last year. So uh -huh. the trick is just knowing who your friends are and, I do have a one young lady at one of the stores who got promoted to manager and she always will text me when new stuff comes in and stuff like that too. So. Wow. Inside scoop, man. Pizza goes a long way, doesn't it? It does. Uh, well, hey, it's always made me happy. So, you know, pizza's freaking good though, man. Um, always. <laughs> I love pizza. In fact, well, I didn't have pizza today, but my neighbor was like, Hey, you want pizza? I was skateboarding outside and he's like, Hey, you want pizza? I'm like, no, not today. He's like, okay, cool. But he does that like almost every single day. So that's the reason why I said no. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I like Domino's. I don't know why. I'm a Domino's freak when it comes to the good pizza here in this town. It's like two seconds from my house. Um, all right. So let's talk about dire advice that you want to give other Q4 FBA players that are, you know, they, they've cleared the, res not the restrictions. Let's say that they are unrestricted in a fair amount of things. Um, they are cleared to play with Q4 and FBA, meaning that they've sold the quantities um, that they're supposed to, right? There's, I think it's, you have to sell 25, not related to toys and games, but just overall, you have to have 20, uh, 25 items shipped through Amazon, through FBA from like what, September 3rd to like the end of October. So that like, that's the measurement period. So if you don't make that measurement period, you don't get to play in Q4. Um, but what would you, what would you, what's some dire advice from each one of you guys that you would give to other Q4 FBA players that are going to play in Q4? So Jameson, what would that be? If you could give one piece of like amazing advice. <laughs> uh, stay off my listing is probably the best advice. No, um, I know for a lot of there's so many new sellers this year. Is uh, if you plan on trying to you know do make a dent and stuff, is like I would get a repricer. If you can get one for like fifteen bucks a month and get in there and start moving product and flipping products and um, get your feet wet. I mean that's about it. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not good at giving advice at this. Like I, I, I feel I don't know a lot about Amazon. Just freaking buy stuff, send it in, sell, or in for repeat. Like, that's all I know how to do. Well, that's funny. Um, Cleeter, what about you? Um, there's probably uh, two things. I think that the number one thing would be don't, if you're a new person, don't see Q4 as the be all end all. Because really, all Q4 for is for me is a chance to spend more money on better stuff. So, like, if my budget was $1,000, let's just say as an example, it wouldn't matter. Like, I wouldn't care about Q4 because I could spend $1,000 on good stuff. 365 days a year. So for me, Q4 is just an opportunity to spend a lot more money a lot quicker. Uh, but if you have a small budget, don't overstress Q4. You need to be spending it now, tomorrow on good stuff. Um, and I think that really just, I mean, like Jameson said, it is basically send in, wash, rinse, repeat, but try to be a little intentional. I mean, you have Keepa, you have Camel Camel, you can research, you can see what the market's doing. Um, and the other thing I would say is be intentional. You know, if, if you're like, oh, my Q4, <gasps> was bad because I had two days down because my printer broke or my, I ran out of labels or, you know, crap like that. Like I've got three regular printers. I've got three label printers. I'm ordering probably one and a half times about everything I'll need in poly bags, boxes, tape. I've got a tape machine and a backup, you know, multiple backup hand tape guns. So the trick is just to really plan ahead and be intentional. Know your vehicle situation, know your backup plan because no excuses is, is acceptable. I mean, unless you're dead. Yeah, true. I hear you. Do you have one of those conveyor belt looking things, the little roller looking things in your warehouse? I do not, but uh, Rose does actually Bro, have, you need one. To get so one, dude. have to get one to compete with her. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, she does have one? Where's her yeah, warehouse? Rose has one. Uh, her, she's in Illinois, I believe. Okay, cool. Um, and Penrod, what about you? Dire advice you'd give to another Q4 player out there. Don't, don't panic and tank the listings. And... Uh, uh, James is already going to be doing it with him. 
But uh, and then the other thing is, don't buy because uh, I see the number of FBA sellers increase on listing that are tanking. So if a listing is tanking, why are you going to buy it and put more funds on? Okay. So those are the two things. There, there, I'll say, say if I could just jump in on that. Think about what Brandon said. Think about when the sale started. And that, that can be an indicator too. If you're buying something the last day of a week long sale, the odds that someone else has a bunch of inventory that's about to go live and tank the price is a lot higher than if you buy it day one of the sale and ship it the next day. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can be like in and out pretty quickly, just what you're saying, Cleeter, right? Yeah, Jameson tanks, I'm just gone before you ever realize it was a deal. Oh man, dang. There's just like a cloud of dust and Cleeter's already down to the next, the next stores. Like, and Jameson's still sending it all in. It's all good. <laughs> Um, Jacob Hall singer is saying Cleeter is a prepper. You're a prepper, man. That's good. Um, okay. So, uh, quick, this is, anyone can answer this question, uh, for a beginner, how risky is Q4 really going to be for a complete beginner? Don't do it. Right. Complete beginner. Jameson, would you advise a complete beginner that's never messed with FBA to mess with Q4? Yeah, just, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I mean, I would definitely get the ball rolling now because who knows if Amazon is going to do the same restriction they did last year where they didn't let any new any new people ship until after Q4. I mean, yeah, it definitely can be done. Like I mentioned earlier, my buddy that just started like a month ago, he's already got the ball rolling and he's like learning stuff. Like he like a couple of days, he already sold 500 bucks like in one day. And I was like, geez, dude, like, and he has no clue what he's doing. So, I mean, anybody can do it. Okay, we'll go to the next question with you since you're here, Jameson. But like, well, how do you do? Uh, like, talk about research real quick. Like, really quickly. Like, how do you do? You do any research? Or do you just kind of just scan everything in the, in the aisles? And what's your method method to the madness here? Um, right now, like, I've, I I network is like. I mean, obviously, I say that a billion times, and anybody can do that. Like, I have so many friends that are like experts in certain areas like i'll even use brandon for an instance like he knows a crap ton about video games but then i know a few video games he doesn't know he's really good at walmart and i'm awesome at target and like we we, we sourced together for a week and we like destroyed stores because we like you know we we used all of our knowledge and it's like just network with different sellers i've had the advantage of meeting probably over 100 green members at least probably 150 green members and so I'm like constantly talking with people, you know, like I'll share like something I a really good find with like these three guys or this one guy. And then like they'll share with me. And so I'm constantly getting new stuff. And so I don't have to do a ton of work up front anymore. I just share the knowledge with the people in my circle and then they do the same and it's less work. We can spend more time buying, shipping and shopping and okay. killing it. So smart way to leverage things. I like that, man. Cleeter, what about you? When I when I say research, like what goes on through your head, and what do you what kind of research do you do? Or are you a huge networker as well? Uh, I am. I have obviously, you know, I, me and Jameson talks occasionally, but he never feels like I know about enough about toys. But that being said, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you do three times a guy's sales, and he still doesn't think you're good enough. It's, it's tough. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, maybe maybe when I beat him again this year. But I um I reach out to uh. I, I have another seller who's bigger than me and does mostly toy RA toys for Q4. So he and I will completely share all our buy lists and we'll kind of, he's been doing it a year or two longer than I have. So we'll bounce all of our buys off each other and discuss how deep we want to go. But honestly, when it comes to research, there's just a lot of good stuff during Q4. That's the best part of it. So it's really just a matter of saying, am I getting this at the cheapest possible price? So I, fo I focus more on what's the market doing. You know, if, if let's just say as an example, a game is $20 a target and you can stack discounts and getting it for $18 at Toys R Us. Well, you know what? As soon as they do a 25 off a hundred, somebody's going to get that game for 15. So just being super familiar with your price points, just walk around, learn the toys, learn what's popular. And also if you are good at other categories like shoes and clothing, they do some crazy shoe sales at the outlets during Q4. I personally don't focus on them just because I want to do toys and I know toys really well, but I will say this, if you focus on shoes during Q4, you know, you're a lot safer because it, those are going to do just as well in January, probably maybe less yeah. velocity, but you know, I was just about to say, for it. that's more of like a year round kind of seller, a good exactly. pair of shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Oh yeah. It, it dawned on me today when I was working out in the gym, um, you know, those like uh, Yeezy shoes, the YZY, you know, like supply three, I don't know. They say like SPLY 350 on the side, but they're basically Yeezys, right? And there's so many different Yeezys. Has anyone out there ever found a pair of Yeezys like actually at the Adidas outlet store ever? I, I was just wondering that today. And maybe I'm pretty sure someone has, like I'm pretty sure something has slipped past every level of a store and it's, it's sitting there. 
at the outlet level. I'm pretty sure that's happened to somebody, but I'm just curious at this point. So um, Yeezys, why is he, I mean, Yeezy, like they're just the Kanye West shoe. Like I, that's the only way I can really say it. They're hella popular, they're crazy popular, crazy, crazy popular. You've so never heard of a like, Yeezy, Brandon? You've never heard of a Yeezy? I heard of Yeezy or Sheezy, but that's it. Oh my god! They sound, they sound, they to me they feel like an inauthentic claim waiting to happen. So even if I found them, I would probably put them on eBay. But yeah, Adidas does not like resellers. And again, if you're if you have lower capital and you're wanting to chase those really valuable high end, which you should, if you have limited money, you should chase those. You know, the Hatchimals of last year, you should chase the. But I'm wanting to buy bulk. Adidas, Adidas does not like people who want to buy bulk. Okay. Um, we are at the end of the show. Let's get that last. Uh, I got to thank you guys. Uh, we couldn't make it through the entire outline, and I want to make sure that I hold true to the one hour uh, show uh, slot that we have right here. Are there any last words from either one of you guys? Um, maybe something that we didn't get to that you want to share with the audience, and then we'll give out the gift card, guys. guys. Um, I know it's going to hurt Cleeter's feelings so much to like not be around the panel anymore, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Crushed, absolutely crushed. Crushed, I know. Uh, any like last words? Uh, let's talk, Jameson. Sounds like you're about to get executed. Um. <laughs> well, um, last words. Oh, I got nothing. Okay, Sorry. that's cool, man. That's all good. If you have nothing, then you've given it, you've given it all, Jameson. That's great. thank you so much. Um, Peter, what about you? Um, I would encourage everyone to look at a calendar. Uh, figure out when your payout dates are and how those reconcile with your shopping times. Uh, I personally, you know, I, I know that I want to have all of my money spent in time to get it all shipped and get that money back on my next payout. So to me, the day after my payout, so um, my payout typically hits my bank on Monday. So on Tuesday, I know I want to spend super heavily because that, that gives me time to get it bought, get it shipped, get it sold, and get that money on my next payout. So I take all of my, I went through all of my old emails from Toys R Us, Target, you know, even Walmart, and I looked at all their old sales, and based on that, over the last couple of years, I predicted what date sales would be, and then I did all the dates of my payouts, and so I predicted, and I made a complete shopping plan, you know, based on those projections. So just be intentional. I love it. So analytical. It's like amazing, dude. It's good though. I mean, some people, some your brain just works that way. I mean, it's just it the way is. it is. Well, this is awesome though. Um, Brandon, what about you? Any last words? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, Q4 gets really hectic, but try to maintain balance. Q4 family life and, and you know eating healthy and working out, which I need to get back on to. But uh, oh, yeah. I think hey, we don't want to talk about <laughs> that shirt that you had the other day. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I just try. I think that'll help you better maintain the stress levels and, and, and all the anxiety and stuff that comes with Q4. Just maintain the balance. Doesn't mean you're not going to work more, but just make sure you're still getting the balance of your life. Keep that going through Q4. Okay. Funny comment from uh, Real Iron Dan. Okay, everyone knows who he is. Um, but he says, how the hell did Jameson get on this panel, not me? <laughs> I thought that was pretty good funny. Point. No, Dan's an, he's an animal, and he has left his uh, full-time job earlier this year to pursue full-time reselling, so that's amazing. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the show. Uh, let's – Jameson, we got one more, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, earlier – Raken showed a bit, uh, board game that he had bought. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give this thing away, but you got to think of something that's like significant to this show only. Okay, okay. Um, I'll look into the, the chat. I have been paying attention. Yes, I'm trying to think here. Okay, now, now, now five, that, that five, I, five bucks, John, that he doesn't come up with an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it 10 that if he does, it's a bad one. <laughs> 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 now you guys are like making me embarrassed to get all nervous. Um, okay. Oh my gosh! Now I'm really on the spot. If anybody thinks of something, jump in. I'm gonna try to think. It's only 110 it's viewers that are waiting 20, right now. 20 clear. <laughs> 30 is something to do with the time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, 50 is internet connection just dies out instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Or he, or he pretends it does. He pretends it does. It's totally making me feel embarrassed now. Um, You're the oldest one on this panel, bro. Okay, the second oldest one on this panel, bro. Show some maturity. You got this. <laughs> Says the guy who always makes fun of my mom. Ooh. I don't make fun of your mom. She and I have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. We're just going to make this super easy. It, it takes no like, knowledge like, at like all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Well, this is what we did when me and Brandon did a live show. If you can guess how many items I sold today, I'm gonna. You know, I'll, we'll do a fifteen dollars Starbucks gift card. Oh, how many items you sold today? I like that. That's not even yeah. on the show, but that. Okay. That so way you can just guess. Well, look at the feed and make sure you got the right. Yep, I'm watching it right now. And you can guess Someone's... as many times as you want. Someone is get this. Oh, cleaner. <laughs> 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 YouTube just told me I've been sending too many messages and uh, blocked me, so I'm done. <laughs> All right, first one to get it, and you can guess as many times as you want. All right, you know the number, so yep. don't say it. I mean, see if you see it go by. As soon as I, I should have been like out. six. Oh my six, god, seven. it's going so <laughs> fast. All right, so far nobody said it. No one. Oh my gosh, how are you wow. gonna see it? We're <laughs> screwed. <laughs> We're totally screwed, Jameson. Freaking is like, uh, <laughs> this is these, awesome. These, these people have too much faith in you. Start in the single digits, folks. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen it go by yet, Jameson? No, I haven't. Are you sure? Okay. We're gonna narrow it down. Do we'll see? narrow it down. Okay. Fifty numbers go by in a second. It, it's, no. it's above fifty, but it's under a hundred. Work for the FBI. Oh, okay, above fifty, below a hundred. Oh, there it is. You better look. Keep looking, Jameson. I don't even know what the answer is, so I can't even help you. <laughs> hey, was you sure you didn't miss it? No, oh, it didn't God. go by. It didn't go by. Ooh. All right. Well, I'm we're so gonna help narrow it down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's in the nineties. Okay. It's in the nineties. There. We helped narrow it down. Somebody was one number off. It's in the nineties. First one to say gets it. Oh my God. We're screwed. <laughs> Cleeter, you won the bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, all right, 91, 91. Okay. Uh, I think that was Caruso. Oh, uh, no, no. Su uh, Randy, I think. Uh, yeah. I Caruso, is that what you see? <laughs> yep, I think it was Randy. Okay, I see it, I see it, I see it. Randy Caruso, get with Jameson. All right. hit me up uh, on Facebook, and uh, we'll hook you up. Jameson oh Philippi, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-I? -I -P -P -I? -I -I, yes. Yeah. Okay. So Jameson Philippi, it's a fifteen dollar gift card. My God, man, we're never doing that type of thing again, man. How never give it off to the guest, Chris. <laughs> you know, you oh YouTube God. tracks YouTube tracks engagement, right? That's a heck of some engagement. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> that was like scaring me, and I'm not even like, oh. Anyway, okay. So I guess we're good to go on the show. Um, you know, we might do another one. Maybe we'll have uh, Dan and some other people on the panel for another one. Maybe we'll revisit this. Maybe closer to. Uh, Black Friday, right? For some real strategy and stuff. But I think it was a great show. Raken, you have any closing uh, things you want to say? Yeah, I want to say one thing that I've noticed about all of these guys ever since I met them on a serious note, and I think it's a great learning lesson for all of us, is these guys are masters at networking. Like, they might not admit it, but these guys from day one in the green room, like, we're always helping people you know, interacting with people, meeting up with people, like showing up and like, that's half the battle. Like so many of us think that we have to be like the smartest, brightest, most talented, know everything. But you know, these guys are all really bright, but they show up first and foremost and um, they never give up. So appreciate you guys coming on and uh, yeah, get out there and meet people and, and, and give value and it'll come back to you 10 times. Yep. I like that. Amen, baby. All right, so that's pretty much the show, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button. We haven't asked it the entire show because we're just focused on the content. Um, but hit the like button, please. And uh, if you have any other suggestions for Green Room shows that you want to see down the line, let us know. Or maybe there's a guest that you want us to interview, let us know that as well. We'll definitely check that out. Thanks for joining the Green Room Hangout tonight. And to the panel, thanks for being here. And uh, we will see you guys on the next Green Room Hangout. Take it easy. Peace. Goodbye. <laughs>